Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back along to another episode of The Young Farmer. My name is Andy, as always, and today you join me on the back of a mammoth driving day. Uh, we have we set off late last night, actually. Uh, we drove back down south. Uh, we drove down to uh, the West Country, where my yard was located, and uh, we had to pick up the final piece of our equipment that we just couldn't get a, a low load of the shift for us. So I uh, borrowed someone's trailer and went down and got it myself. I'm here with the Eiffel, uh, with the loader today just to get it off. Um, for the Eagle Eye the Monster, you may remember that this was the first drill that we ever bought ourselves. This is the one that I bought when I had the old case back in the day. Um, it is absolutely delightful as far as uh, as far as three meter conventional drills go. It is an Amazon. Uh, it is the AD302. With a nice, uh, great working power arrow there, We've actually, it has a rubber coil packer on the back. And it is perfect for what we've always needed for the smaller jobs. And we brought it up here because we do still get a bit of a heavier ground to work on. And we also get quite a few um, like bird plots and game cover crops, things like that. Uh, which the big drill can do, but we're quite often in the kind of small pokey corners of fields really. So that's why we're going to use this. So we'll get this one uh, lifted off. We just, I borrowed the neighbor's uh, telehandler and adapter, which means I can just kind of hook it onto the front of the telehandler there. And I'll get it angled into the shed. Uh, it's going to be the easiest way. As you can see, the yard is pretty busy. We've got a lot of uh, got all the balers hooked up at the moment. As soon as we get this done and get everything kind of packed up and away, we're going to be driving out in the fast track to go and do a bit of square bale challenge today, uh, which would be pretty cool. I haven't done any of that in a while. But first, just gonna jump back into this guy. Now, this is a great little attachment, actually. You can just kind of shift anything around on the yard with this guy. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get ourselves squared up a little bit, and we'll get this moved. So how you all doing, folks? Hope everyone is well. I hope the weather is as good for you as it is for us. We're in the middle of, middle of a bit of a heat wave, really. Uh, I got the call for the silage bailing we're about to go and do. Oh, no less than about an hour ago, actually. Uh, and it was just the fact that it got mowed down late uh, yesterday evening and it's ready to go so we're going to take advantage of that where possible. I'm just going to bring this in a bit. Oh, one my, lost one of my uh, markers there. So the beauty of this being on here is going to be a little bit easier for me to kind of angle this into the shed all being well. Uh, so I think what we'll do, we're driving backwards because I want to put it against that back wall. Easy does it. Space at the front there. Bit of a heavy weight on the front end though, I must admit. Take it slowly past the fast right there. I think we're in. Another great reason to have a telehandler, but I just can't afford it for this alone. However, um, if we got any more work coming in with the load of work, then we might it might make sense to look into this. But for now, we'll just uh, keep borrowing the neighbors, I think. Oh, that's a little way there. So, this is pretty much all of our equipment that we had down south, and it's all back up in one place now, which I'm so pleased about. There we go. Happy days, and it's in. That will predominantly, when it is used, predominantly be on the class. Uh, and uh, yeah, like I say, mainly will be for cover work, cover crop work, uh, planting of uh, bird seed plots and things like that. But it's always nice to have a different option. Now we're going to take the, uh, the telehandler back over to the neighbours. We need to do a little bit of sorting around, but got um, Eiffel Williams trailer to take back as well. But uh, that'll be something we just got to ferry around very quickly and then we'll get ourselves on our way. Okay, next job for the day is to swing the Eiffel Williams trailer back into here, which has been a huge help for me actually. Just trying to get a haulier to bring the uh, drill up from the south and just can't get anyone free around this time of year, so it's uh, proven to be a real burden. But uh, So I figured we'd just take a day, do it myself, and then get it out of the way. We have it here now, so that's all good. Uh, so we're just going to stick this back where we found it. There we go, and hook all of that there. It's a great trailer actually. Good size as well, you can get a lot of equipment on there if you need to. Uh, good strong uh, chassis to it as well. Uh, but yeah, that is done, so we'll get around back to the yard, back to the uh, the baling team really, and let's see what's, uh, 
Well, we're gonna head out there. Something that was swapped up yesterday. We need to go and see what it's looking like. See if it's how thick it is as well. Uh, I don't know who's wrapping it because it, I haven't got a square bale wrapper yet, which is something that always annoys me. Given that I offer, I do have a square baler. I should always try and find a wrapper for it. But uh, the moment there, we we'll just have to see what we can do. I think they're aware I don't have a wrapper, so that's that's all that I care about. So what are you all up to anyway? Hope everything is going well. Do let me know down below where you're working, what you're doing and what you're driving right now as well. Always very intrigued to know. There's been some uh, been some great comments in the past with uh, some, of the, some of the rigs that you guys are driving out there. So do keep those coming. It's a beautiful day here on Peterville. Uh, sun is shining. We're supposed to be in for some great, great uh, warm, dry days over the next week. Which if we get what we're supposed to... I don't foresee it being too, too long until the uh, the first cut. Uh, winter barley is ready, actually. I really don't think we'll be that far away, which would be very interesting. Uh, waiting for the phone to go, really have to bring the fence back down. Uh, now, in terms of the yard as well, I have agreed a price and a contract with a uh, agricultural shed supplier. Uh, so they're going to come start doing work. I need to really shuffle things around the yard for them to be able to do it, but they're gonna come start work very soon, which would be great. Really will be nice to get that done. Now. Really will be great to go. Now what's gonna happen, <clears throat> you can kinda of see the, the the shed is gonna, the edge of the shed is gonna line up with this guy here. So it's gonna start about there. Ah, it's going to go that way. And it's probably going to go this way for, I think it's about 20 meters. It's about to there. So it's going to be a fair size. It's going to go all the way back there. It's going to be big enough to so we can keep several pieces of machinery in there. Maybe the tractor's in there as well. Uh, and kind of just clear out some of the clutter from around the yard and in that big shed there. Because eventually I want the combine to be able to stay in one of these sheds as well. So that's the plan at least. I will see how that materializes over time. But yeah, we're, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it should be plenty good enough. It's a good mixture of being sufficient in size, but also not too expensive, because some of the prices I was getting were astronomical. Left the lights on there, haven't I? There we go. And then, yeah, so, and we're able just to squeeze it in without having to get, uh, kind of extend the yard boundaries here. I didn't think about... Uh, acquiring a bit of that land next door there, but it just wasn't the be so quite happy with that in the end worked out very well for all of us Now we're going to jump into the mighty fast track uh, And we're gonna get ourselves out and do a bit of bailing here going too far away here. There we go. We're just going about oh, no, five minutes over that way. There's a local power station that we're going nearby. Uh, we'll get that all done. I'm waiting for the phone call for the land that we wrapped up, bailed and wrapped in the previous uh, vlog we did. I'm waiting for the phone call to see if we have to go and stack that at any time soon, but it hasn't arrived yet, so we'll watch the space as far as that's concerned. I'm also tempted to, as I mentioned there, when the other bale or handling work that we do have this summer, I'm tempted just to hire in a telehandler for the summer. And, uh, yeah, just see how much use we actually get if we hire one in for like six, eight weeks. See how much use we can actually get from it. And if it's worth it, then if it's a costly, uh, if we get a good return on it, then yeah, it might be worth looking into. We can't, definitely can't afford to buy one right now. As I mentioned there, look at that, that barley's coming on leaps and bounds. It's always nice to get back out in the big bailer as well. It really, really is. So we're going to rumble along here. We're not too far away actually. And then we'll, uh, we'll get ourselves into the field. Can't record going past the power station, so we'll have to pick it back up in a little bit. Alright then, here we are. Uh, gate opened up. This is a 
pretty thick looking field actually. It's off the fairly ginormous. It's been raked up into you know, kind of uh, eight, nine meter uh, windrows, I would say. So there's gonna be enough for us to get going with, that's for sure. Like I said, I'm not sure what's happening with the rapper man, but that's not really my concern today. Uh, what we'll do is just get ourselves in here. Make sure we get everything set up properly, and then we can get a... This field shouldn't take too long to do. Uh, assuming that everything is okay with the with the baler there. This is going to be the first real work the square baler has had this summer, but that's fine. We always have to get it set in. Make sure that's all down. Change the height and change up there. There we go. Yeah, we're looking good. It's all been serviced over there. It is all ready to roll, really, but it's just uh, just needs to be kind of worn in a little bit, to be honest, and warmed up. So uh, I expect a few things to go wrong here. We always do when you first bring the baler out to do some proper work. So I yeah, will see how it goes. If it does, it does. We've got plenty of spare shear bolts um, in the toolbox on the front, uh, and any of the other uh, mechanisms for the nut rings, for example, and the, the hooks that we've got in the front. Of the Hey, well, uh, we're all ready to go, so I don't think we'll hang on any further. Let's see how we're looking here. Alright, and off we go. It's not my biggest loss, that's for sure. It seems to be quite light though, it must have just fluffed it up quite well, but. Tracks are not struggling as we start to forge through it here, so that's good news. Thanks for a better easy day. We're doing about 17 kilometers an hour right now, so that's uh, that's not too bad at all, actually. There are times in my uh, blossoming career here where I do think about what used to be with the old case. Uh, Max on the go. That was a great machine. Really served me well to get going there. So it's uh, it's fantastic that we're. I'm, I'm so fortunate being able to progress through to where I am now. Uh, two newish machines. Uh, so a fleet of balers. So it's a good position to be in. And some of my own land as well. Mustn't uh, we mustn't forget. Like this, I didn't think of the bailer man, though, that's for sure. There we go. So this field, I've been told, is not much more than about 8 acres, just an odd shape for 8 acres. Uh, so it won't take us too long to do that, shouldn't give too many bales. But enough for some of them to work on. I'm not sure where they're going, uh, or if it's going to be stacked in the corner of the field, but again, that's not really my concern right now. Looks like our spring barley on the hillside is coming through well, as is the cover crop actually. The cover crop shot on really, really has exploded in recently, which is fantastic news. So long may that continue. Uh, we're just going to leave it. We're not going to uh, add anything to it or touch it at all. Just going to do its thing. Now what I would say is that the wind, the, the spring barley that we drilled just over the hedge there does need a bit of attention to that. I wonder if we get the call to do that because there's a few, but there's a bit of black grass coming through there I think right now. Really difficult to bail. I know the softest up didn't do a great job. So predominantly we'll be using the square baler this year for straw, at least that's the intention. Straw and hay mainly. Uh, we'll try and we'll be bailing up all of my own straw to sell. Um, we'll be bailing up a little bit of straw around here that I've already asked, been told that you know the, the work's going to come our way. So we'll, we're going to have a fair bit of work with the square baler. Rounds I always expect to do just quite a bit generally really. Uh, a lot of people prefer and have uh, the system in place to handle round bales, which is you know great for me uh, at the very least. So we'll have to see about that. But uh, yeah, we'll try and get around as much as we can. And just like that, that's number one done. We're spinning around. Go back the other way there. Mainly just so I can have a look at that bell that we just dropped out at the end, see what that's looking like. When you get going, there seems to be a fair few bells coming in actually, which is good to see. Now 
then we'll knock it off, because otherwise the second I step out of the tractor here, the dead man switch will kick off the PTO anyway. And here we are, nice solid looking bill. Looks like it's all kind of uh, dialed in there, I would say. The strings are all nice and tight on it as well. That is coming in at about uh, six foot in length, five, well no, five and a half foot. Uh, so around about the right size as well. As you can see though, there's a fair number of them. Quite a thick looking bit of uh, grass, particularly when you get into it here. So uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. We'll keep rumbling along through this as well, get it all bailed out. And then we're done for the day, I think, at the moment. So. We'll continue. Thank you ever so much for watching uh, today's episode. I have been Andy, your young farmer. I do hope you have enjoyed. If you have, don't forget to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and join Simulation for the Nation. We very kindly agrees to host everything. And we will see you in the next one. So until then, have yourself a great rest of your day. Enjoy what you're doing as always, but most importantly, happy farming.